This is the seventh segment creating the shower and wraparound bench for the Parabola Master Bath project. And the topic that we're addressing is the shower and wraparound bench. And to begin with, we'll start with the wraparound bench and then we'll look at creating the niche in the shower. And with the niche in the shower, the client has given us a photo with some ideas. And this is the beginning of the process of design. The photo had three niches and the client wanted to do that in the shower with a uh, similar look. So we're using that as a design guideline and you can see in the rendering what we actually came up with. So let's go ahead and get started in the program. To create that bench I'm going to use the same tool that we used to create the tub platform which is the polyline solid tool. And I'm going to come in here and uh, create our shape. And let's go ahead and highlight our dimension. We'll set that to be 14 inches. And then I want this to wrap around and using the number 3 on my keyboard or there's a break command down here called break line. You'll see the 3 after that. Click that and we'll just click a break and we'll just pull that into the second line there. And we'll pull that down and snap it in. So again I'll highlight this edge and set that same dimension at 14 inches. And now I'm going to go ahead and open this up and the elevation at the top was 23 inches for the tub platform so we'll match that and then the thickness of our bench I'm going to put that at 4 inches. So the next step is remember on the tub platform we had a different material similar to this photo here different material on the tub platform than the material below and I'm going to create a copy of that platform we just drew and then I'm going to put a one inch or half inch overhang on it. So let's go ahead and use the copy in place tool. Let me turn off my temporary dimension so it doesn't get too noisy. So copy in place you won't be able to tell what happened but it now copied that in place and I'm going to pull this up and as I pull that up I'm just going to go ahead and put in a half inch and then we'll do the same thing on this side pull that over press the tab key and I'll put in a half inch so you can see that overlap in there and the only thing I need to do now is change the thickness of this element so we're gonna raise that up by a uh, three-quarters of an inch and then the thickness of this would be three-quarters of an inch Now what I want to do is create a radius on that so we can get rid of that point. And I'm going to use a 6 inch radius with our fillet tool. So click on the fillet tool and if you click on that again it will give you the distance of the radius which I've already entered in there. And now all I have to do is click on the other edge and that will create the radius. So we'll do the exact same thing on the other element. Click on the edge, click on the fillet tool, click on the opposite edge and it will create that. Now let's go ahead and zoom in. You'll notice that it's not quite symmetrical. So what I want to do is let's use our line tool here and let's draw a line that and again let's just see if we can press our tab key. I'll just mark this to be a polar distance and then we'll put in a half inch. So I have a half inch line here and remember the distance between here and here is a half inch so I'm going to grab this outer radius and I'm just going to snap that into place right there and then I'll just delete that line because it's just temporary. Now let's go into our 3D view using our camera here and we'll just generally point and click in that direction and you see the integrated bench now using the material eyedropper click on the top of the tub platform and the top of our bench and we'll do the same thing for the lower part of the platform and click and apply that. Now to support the corner of that I'm going to go into the library from the plan view. It'll be easier to place it. I'm going to enter in here a tapered column. Hit search. Find the column that we're after and that's pretty large. Let's go ahead and modify that set the height to be something like 23 inches by 4 inches on the width and depth. Now we can position that 
appropriately. Go back to our 3D view. And I'm just going to rotate around here just a little bit so we can grab the color off of the cabinet using the material eyedropper. And I'll click and apply that to the column. Let's rotate back around. Now the next step is let's put a uh, tile on all of our walls and work our way around and create the, uh, the shower. So let's go ahead and close things up here and uh, go back into our uh, plan view. There we go. And I'm going to begin with just using a wall elevation on the wall that we created our bench on. And in the wall elevation, I'm going to use our backsplash tool. And I'm just going to click and place it. It will place a backsplash on the entire wall. Now this backsplash, you'll notice there's some marquee lines. You can pull that down if it's a shower that you don't want. Hit escape a shower that you don't want the tile to go all the way up and so you can modify that. Let's close that view and go and take a view of our shower fixture wall. So I'll just go in and do the opposite wall here and let's place our uh, fixtures on this wall. First in the library let's place our fixtures and I want to do a search for a uh, grab bar and we'll want to find a wall mount grab bar. Let's grab that and we'll place that. Highlight it, double click on it, and we'll be more precise with the dimensions, but let's go ahead and set that to be 36 and 7 eighths. It'll just make it a little quicker when we do this off the floor. And now what I want to do, let's clear our search. And I've saved some of my favorites down here for my bath short list and I want to grab a valve. Let's go ahead and place our valve in this area right here and then we'll grab our shower head. Scroll down here and find the matching shower head and I'll just place that roughly in that area. Now I'm going to highlight the shower head, use my center tool and center that on the faucet so when we do our dimensions I can do both of those at the same time. Close our library now I'll use the automatic dimension tool, place the dimensions. I'm going to highlight both the valve and the faucet and I'm going to set that dimension by clicking on it. We'll enter in 22 inches. And then I'm going to use the centerline dimension and create a vertical centerline. Let's just draw that dimension down through here. I'll pull it off to the side. And let's just pull that over. And I want to click on the faucet and select this dimension. I want to set that to be 6 inches. And I'm going to do the same thing for the faucet head. I'm going to highlight the dimension. I'm going to set that to be 36. And now I'm going to highlight both the valve and faucet. I want two sets of these in the shower. Use the copy tool and I'm going to slide over and as I'm sliding over I want that to be exactly 24 inches. Set that up and now I'm going to use my dimension. Click on this. Notice the extra diamond right here. Just pull that over here. And you'll notice that above this dimension there is no CL because I added that later. Let's go ahead and double click on that dimension and make that change underneath the extensions. You'll notice the 1, 2, 3, 4 correlates with the numbers above the dimension strings. The dimension string that I want to change is number 2. Highlight that, mark it as a center line, select OK. Some people like to have their center line dimensions come down towards the fixture, so I'll just pull those both down using my crosshairs to make the alignment. I'm also going to move this center line off of the faucet and move it to the grab bar. And then let's highlight the grab bar and I'm going to set that to be 32 inches off that wall. Now the final thing that we need to do is just place the tile on here. Again we're going to use the same tool that we did on the previous wall. Custom backsplash, just click on the wall since we want the entire wall covered. Notice my grab bar got covered up a little bit. That backsplash that we placed was a half inch. 
I'll adjust that in my plan view and make that look accurate. Back into the plan view to move those items out just past the backsplash. First thing is I'm going to turn off my object snaps over here on the right hand side of your screen. Click that. Now I'm going to draw a marquee around these elements here. You'll notice that it says six elements are selected in the bottom left hand screen. Now all I have to do is click on this and pull that out so that it then touches the outside of that backsplash. Now that wall elevation will be accurate. Now for the final wall in the shower, let's zoom out here a little bit. In the rendering, this is what we've come up with. We want three niches. That was derived from the photo the client provided that was the niches really above the bathtub. So we're going to go ahead and repeat that process. And to do that, let's use a slightly different tool because I want to show a little bit more detail with this. With an all, wall elevation, when we do our niches, you won't be able to see the full detail because it will end at the wall and not go all the way through the wall. So instead of the wall elevation, I'm going to use a tool called the back clip cross section. And I'm going to come out here and just cut a section through this part of our model. And what that's going to do is it's going to show us all of the platforms that exist. Now I don't have a roof on here, but you can see that I do have a foundation and I do have the floor framing and part of the wall framing in here as well. In fact, let's click auto detail and let's just move our insulation off the top of that and we'll scroll in here a little bit. Now to begin with, a wall niche is usually created using one of our tools under Windows called a pass-through. So I'm going to click on this and click on the pass-through. And now when I place this, what's going to happen is you're going to actually see the studs exposed into the wall. And since this is a remodel project, I want to modify this so that it fits exactly in between those studs. And I'll position that more accurately in the plan view. But to begin with, let's highlight that window and let's go through the changes that we need to make on it. And we'll begin at the very top here. So those studs are 16 inches on center. So that means that the width in between that is 14 and a half inches. That's what I'm going to set that opening to be. On the height, that was a pretty large height for the niche, but we're going to set it at 28 inches. And then the floor to bottom, I want that above my grab bar. So I'm going to leave that at 42 inches floor to bottom. Let's take a look at the options. That's OK. Casing, we don't want any casing on either side, so we'll remove that. Lintel, sill, remove the exterior sill. Uh, and then on the frame. Now the frame, I want that to be about an eighth of an inch because that will then show the tile inlay in there. And select OK. Now those are the main changes that we need to make for that window. And all I need to do now is return back into the plan view and position that accurately. Let's just use Shift F6 on the keyboard. And you can see it over here on the right hand side in our plan view. And position that correctly, what I need to do is go into our layer control here and turn on our framing. I'll press F on the keyboard to skip down to the Fs. Find our wall framing. There it is. And we'll turn that layer on. And I'm also going to turn on, uh, well, that's good for now. And now you can see where those studs are. So let's go ahead and highlight that window. I'm going to turn on my object snaps again. And let's just slide that over and to place. Now I'm going to highlight that window and I'll zoom out here a little bit. I want to create three copies of that and put it in between the bays of the other framing members. So using the multiple copy tool, Let's set that to copy every 16 inches on center. So I'm just going to slide that over and let that slide right into the bay. And now that creates three copies inside of there. Now the next thing we need to do, you'll notice in the back clip cross section, you can actually see right through those windows. And that's the advantage of using the back clip cross section versus the wall elevation because you would not be able to see on the back side of it. 
So with wall niche, what we need to do is put a backer behind it. And I'm going to use a polyline solid to create that backer. Let's just zoom in here a little bit. Using polyline solid tool, let's come in here and we'll just roughly create that backer. And then I'm going to have to position that to be accurate in my plan view. You see where it drew it in the plan view? And let's just turn off, well, let's just slide that into place down here. Sometimes you may have to pull the uh, control key down. And I'm not going to worry too much about exactly where it goes. But I am going to try to make sure that it's positioned somewhat in the middle of that wall. Now, let me take a 3D overhead shot of this so you can see what we have. So you can see on the back side of it, first of all, we'll need to solve that, but on the inside, if we rotate around, you can see what we have for the niche. So let's use our material painter, pick up the color off of the floor and apply that. It looks like I grabbed the glass instead. Let's undo that and grab our material. So let me just hit undo here. I don't want glass niche, although that might be interesting. So let's grab the uh, material off of the floor and apply it on there. And then if you want to apply it onto the frame, we can just come around here, click it onto the frame, and that's actually two components that we need to get, or we can change it for the whole object with the material painter. And we'll just come in here and make that change. So that's why I left that frame at an eighth of an inch, so I could actually paint that. Now, if we rotate around, what we need to do now, let me just make sure this doesn't spin too much. What we do need to do now is actually cover that area up. And so back in the plan view, I'm just going to make a copy of that polyline solid that we had. I'm going to press the tab key to get into it. Copy in place. And then I'm just going to now pull that back. And all I need to do is actually change the material. And let's just make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And then back into the 3D view, let's use our material eyedropper and fix that. So the material eyedropper, and we'll paint that last component and make it seamless. So that's kind of how you create the uh, shower niche. Now, if you want to accessorize it, let's take a look at that. In the library, what I've done is I've gone through and collected a bunch of elements and then I blocked them together. You can see the preview of them down here. So I've gone through individually out of the bonus library items and maybe items that I've imported. And I've created those and I'm going to just place those in my plan view. And then let's rotate them around to be the right orientation. And then we'll just slide those into the end of the niche. And this is a good example of anything that you've done much work on. Uh, block them, save them into your library, and it'll give you a jump start on, on completing your design work. Now, a couple more things here that we want to explore. In the library, let's go ahead and grab one of our toilets and place that in the room. Scroll back up here and find a, a, a toilet. And I'm just going to click and place that in the room. Let's slide over here and make sure that it's centered. Let's use our center tool and center that in the room. And let's broaden the uh, elevation view, close the library. And the first thing you're going to notice in this section view is the floor framing is going to be a problem, right, for that toilet. And this is nice and helpful so you can avoid issues when you actually get in the field and, and change orders that maybe you're responsible for instead of the client since it should have been caught early on. And what I do, let me split my screen here is you'll notice I have my wall framing layer on and if you go down uh, to the level below here on the basement and let me turn on my uh, floor framing on this layout level so F on the keyboard find our floor joists we'll just turn those on and you can actually see those and so you can toggle that layer on and off let's turn those back off because I want to show you a little trick that I do 
go ahead and go back up a level. It's called Reference Floors, and it's a tool that you can get a shortcut to over here uh, on the right-hand side. You can also press F9 on the keyboard. Let's explore uh, before I actually press that key. If you double click on the floor number here, change floor reference, if you double click on that, you can define that reference display set. And what I've done here is I've created a copy of that and I've called it the reference display for kitchen and bath. And if you go in there and look at the different layers you can turn on or off, the very top layer that I have is the floor joist. So that's marked and I've set the color to be somewhat of a brown color. Select OK and select OK. Now when I press the F9 on the keyboard here, you're going to now see the overlay from the floor below. And since I've turned on that floor framing, you can now see exactly where that framing is. And you can even send this out to your construction drawing so when your framers and your plumbing guy are out on site, they kind of get the idea that, uh, yeah, that's a problem to put the framing right in the middle of the toilet. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is let's go back down to the floor below here. Um, let's go over here and go down to the floor below. Again, the reference, if I toggle that on and off, you can turn that off. Let's turn that back on for just a second. And I'm going to use the W on the keyboard and I'm just going to draw a line right through the middle of that toilet. That's just a temporary line that I'm going to use. And we'll turn off the reference display. And let's go back in and turn that framing layer back on for the floor framing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and slide that over to the side of the toilet and then use the copy tool and reflect about that line that we drew. Ah, wrong way. Hit undo. Got a little ahead of myself. So try that again. The copy and reflect about that line. And then I'll just delete that line since it's not needed. Now in the elevation view you can see clearly we have room to get our plumbing through there. And if you want to show the added detail for that, you can just come in here and draw a uh, rectangular four inch box that would basically represent that and let's put a fill style in there solid and let's change the color to a uh, black gray select OK and now you can see that plumbing and we'll just slide it up so that it represents where it's going through the floor so you can show that detail in there for your design now the final thing that we're going to do in the video is I want to show the blocking. You'll notice that my grab bar doesn't have any blocking. Let's go ahead and make uh, show you how to do that. So really the easiest way to do it is just to use a cross box. Let's pull down a little bit. And for our shower blocking, let's just put a, a cross box in here. And if I turn on my temporary dimensions, you can highlight that and set those dimensions. We'll just zoom in here a little bit. So if that's a uh, two by something, then you can set those dimensions and then precisely locate it. Now the other thing for blocking is let's say that you actually want to show the details for your framer. Let's come back over to our plan view, highlight this wall, and in the lower menus you can actually open up that wall detail and see the framing. And what I want to do is use the build wall bridging in here. So we'll just come in here and put the wall bridging. You'll notice it updates in the cross section view, right? And if you highlight that wall bridging, let's go ahead, before I do that, let's go back into our plan view. And I'm going to grab that grab bar. Let's copy it and reflect it around the wall. So I now have a grab bar on both sides of that wall. Back into the wall detail. If I highlight that wall bridging, double click on it, let's change the thickness to 2 by 8 effectively. And we'll just select OK. And now you can see where that is. Obviously I have to move it down, 
but if I come in and add my dimension, let's go ahead and just run a dimension line down through here. It's going to pick up quite a few things that I probably don't care about, but that's okay. Let's just pull off that bottom one. Highlight our wall blocking and let's change that to something like 36. Actually perhaps 34. And now you can see where that blocking applies right in there. And I can take this detail on the right hand side of the screen and send that out to my construction drawings or pin it up on the wall that's going to be uh, modified and make sure that it gets framed correctly. Well, that's an added detail if you have the Premiere version that you can use. I also like to use the cross box for added things like our shower bench if I want to come in here and just uh, notch that out so that it's not seen. Let's actually let me put that over here and we'll just draw that in place. And then you can show that level of detail. And let me open up my final layout page and I'll show you what it actually looks like. So what I've done here is in the upper left hand section is that wall detail we were just working on with some call out text and then the fixture wall with the dimensions and the center lines and then off to the far right hand side is our framing detail showing the dimensions of the framing blocking for the grab bar, our valves, and our shower head. And then in the bottom right hand corner is just a framing overview and uh, I guess there's real no purpose of that other than it just shows the uh, maybe some of the detail of where the framing members are. So that'll wrap up that section of the video. The next component will be looking at some rendering and 3D model techniques in the following video. So continue on watching or uh, skip ahead to the next one you're interested in.